as neat as crafts. I have so many of these paper tubes and I wanted to do a really cool craft with them that would use up quite a bit of them because, you know, I just have so many and they're bulky and they take up a lot of space. So I was thinking for a while about something cool that I could do with them. And so I'm going to build them into um, a volcano. So I kind of need to make sort of like a mountain shape out of them first. I need to create a 3D, almost like a pyramid shape out of them. So I pulled out what I'm going to need. Um, and I, I've got a couple of them kind of just banded together with some blue painter's tape. And so um, I've got that. I'm going to stack one on top like that. I'll have to glue them. I'm going to build another one on top. And then on the little in-betweens, I'm just going to stick one there, one there, and one on the other side. And so that will build the whole thing. So you'll have this shape on the bottom, and then these all just have to hot glue in place. And then you'll have this on top of it, um, which will just kind of look like the three, and then one more on top. So I'm going to have to hot glue right there. So I'm going to start just assembling and building the base of it by gluing all the pieces down. All right. A little bit right there, too. Okay. And go around and we're going to put one more right here. Okay, and I'm going to get a little glue on some of the touch points around here where it's going to be sitting down on the other tubes on the bottom layer. And I'm going to glue it this way like that so it has a little more support. Okay, this could be a fun, you know, STEM challenge for the kids to do. They have to kind of figure out how to build it in the sturdiest way. And then, you know, all the other ways to decorate it and things that can go into building it could also just add to that. Make it a fun project. Okay, there's that. Of course, the top will be really easy to do. We're just going to stick this one right on top. But, you know, depending on what kind of building materials you have, you could make some extra shapes on there and lumps and bumps to make it look like a whole bunch of cracks and crevices and look like the real deal. Of course, if you don't want to give the kids a glue gun, this could definitely be done with tacky glue. I wouldn't use Elmer's glue. It's too runny, too watery, takes too long to set. But tacky glue is thick enough and you could just almost dip these tubes into the tacky glue if you just put it into a bowl and then stack them that way. Um, you probably would still want to let it dry a little bit, so maybe doing the building part one day and coming back to it another day to do the next part, which is what I'm about to do here. Now this is where you can use um, a whole bunch of recycled stuff. If you have old newspapers, if you just have those ads that come in the mail, um, any, any kind of big piece of paper that's crunchy and easy to kind of mush up with your hands. So I just have a really big piece of newsprint and this is the stuff that I use to cover my tables. Um, so it's just really thin, crunchy gray paper. So um, if you want to, you can pre-crinkle it, which is something that I might do. I might decide to just kind of crinkle the whole thing before I do the next step. So just so it has some wrinkles on it because we want this to look like you know, a mountain, a volcano. So you want to crunch the whole thing up. Again, these are really, these are really good activities to do with little kids because it gets them kind of using their hands, using some of those muscles, using some of that, um, those skills that maybe they haven't really gotten to practice yet. So there we go. And then flatten it out again. All right. And then we're going to bring back our shape of the mountain. And then just laying this right on top, we're going to sort of start to gather it around like this. And this is where it helps to have a partner to come in with some tape or maybe hold it in place for you while you're deciding if this is how you want it to look. If you want it to uh, sort of gather at the bottom, you don't even have to cut all this extra stuff off. You can just tape it on there, which is exactly what we're going to do because it's going to get painted. So you can take long, long pieces of painter's tape and just start kind of wrapping this thing up. So I'll start at the top. Here, I will just sort of stick it on there like this. And then my tape is just going to wrap right around. So I'm just going to start to bring it around. You don't have to do it really tight at first. You can do more pieces later. But I'm just sort of taming it a little bit, kind of getting it contained in one spot. I definitely have the shape that I want now and I put enough tape and I sealed it down so I know the paper's not going to come loose or anything weird like that. Okay and then another extra little thing you can do is just sort of with your thumb here poke a little hole in the top and maybe even put some more tape in there to hold it down because we want the top to, well, you know, now this isn't going to be able to, uh, you know, be like one of those experiments where you can actually make it explode with the, with the, um, baking soda but 
you will want it to look like it's dark in there and we're going to do something cool around the edge so i want to just seal it down so that way when we paint it we don't have all this loose paper sticking up so the little foundation that i'm going to use is just a piece of cardboard so i just have this you know it's a side panel to an amazon box and i'm just going to glue it right there in the middle so this is where you're going to need some hot glue and i'm just going to kind of look again at the touch points and probably glue it on um you know some of the little edges of the um the cardboard tubes and then i'm just going to stick it down there um, also again you could use tacky glue for this part if you want if you have a day or you know just a few hours to let it dry before you come back to it and the next step is just to paint it so something like this i probably use a combination of brown maybe gray or black on the mountain part the volcano and then as you get down here i probably would start to incorporate a little bit of green but also just keep it very dark is kind of the the idea that i have so okay i just have all the colors in one container so I just chose the three that I thought would mix nicely to get the color I want. Um, obviously, if I want it to be more brown in one spot, I'll just put more brown on my brush. But I don't really care how this turns out as far as, you know, the seeing the combination of colors. I'm just going to just sort of dip from the center and get them all on there at once. So this part can take you a while because there's a lot of surface area to cover and also because it's paper you know it's gonna soak it up so make sure you have plenty of paint when you do this get the big bottles get the eight ounce bottles or even the tempera that's fine you could even water down paint since all you're painting on is newsprint it's not like it has to be super solid paint or anything like that it doesn't have to be very thick or high quality just the cheapy paint can be watery that's fine so now with the same brush i didn't wash it i still have all the black and brown in there and i'm just going around and doing a little bit of green which i now have green in my palette on top of all those other colors so it mixes in and it just sort of looks like a natural green color what you might find out in the forest um so i am just coming along the bottom here and just kind of roughly doing some green on there and we're also going to put some other stuff on here i've got some uh some little silk leaves and some other pieces of greenery that I can stick on here too in the end. And then you can climb a little bit of that green onto the base of the volcano too, that's okay. So another reason why I like to use masking tape for projects like this is because it paints like paper. So it's a lot easier to cover over masking tape than it is to cover over something like smooth plastic scotch tape. So that's why I wouldn't want to use that, even though it would have the same stick would still be able to stick to the paper easily it just wouldn't be easy to paint over because it's too smooth so you want something that's got that papery feel and masking tape is perfect for that all right so uh, all around the bottom even though my paint is still a little wet and sticky you can tell because it's still shiny i'm just gluing some of these little silk leaves there now these just come off of the flower stems if you buy silk flowers they all come with leaves on them but we don't always use the leaves sometimes we just use the flower part leave the leaf on the stem and sometimes the leaf ends up getting thrown away or just never used but save the leaves because you can do stuff like this with it. You could also add some flowers on there if you had some, anything tropical you wanted to put on there. But I'm not going to do any flowers on this. I've got an idea for some color. Throw a little bit of bright color on here. But um, I'm just going to add from the silk leaves, not the flowers. I've also got a few little dinosaurs I'm going to put on there. These little plastic guys. So I'm going to put them down at the bottom somewhere too. So figure out where they're going to go. I'm just kind of situate them somewhere in the leaves. I've also got some of this moss stuff, which is really cool. You could even use real moss. This one I bought in the store, but maybe if there's any spot even on your volcano where it's looking a little bare or maybe, you know, tuck it under there somewhere. You could just kind of get a little bit of glue and stick a bunch of it in there and it poking out the bottom just to give it something extra. And there's just a lot of fun things you can do with a craft like this. There's a lot you can add. So I'm going to stick some in there because I don't like that you can see some of the paper. So let's just get a little glue, just enough to hold on to some of this. And then just stick it in there. So now I need the lava to pour down the from the top to the bottom as far as it can go. And I'm going to do the melted crayon trick with this one. So I just have a couple. I've got an orange. I've got a yellow old crayons. This one doesn't even have a label. It doesn't matter. You can break off a piece. And then I took some old scissors and I cut them into little nubbies like we've done before, okay? And I'm just going to go around and glue them to the top. So they don't have to go all the way around, but just know that wherever you put them is where you're gonna see some lava coming down, okay? So put them wherever you can, flip on the dryer, 
aim it right at those crayon nubbies until you start to see a little splatter. You can even let it splatter on the inside if you want. There it goes. Maybe we can even get some of the yellow and orange to kind of mix together. Yeah, see, that doesn't even matter. We lost a little nubby. It just kind of melted off. But at least we got what we wanted from it. We got the little bit on the top dripping down. And because we crinkled up the paper and um, we created all those little bumps and creases in it, it's kind of trickling down like it would a mountain. So it's not really going straight down in any sort of pattern, which is what we want. So there you have it. I think if you wanted to put a little more time into this, you can make it look really cool with all kinds of different little plants and foliage. And of course, you can always be a little more careful with where you place your crayons if you wanted to make sure you have lava coming from the top all the way down to the bottom. And if you had bigger crayons, that would also do the trick. But I like the amount of lava that I have coming down here. And I like that it kind of gathered and pooled in this area right here. You would just decide which area you want to be the front of it. And I think this angle is what I want for the front. So I really like the way this looks. And I like this one particular dinosaur so I'd want him showing in the front there really cool and definitely a neat piece that you wouldn't have thought could come from all the different recycled materials we used on this <laughs>